Welcome to BeerAmerica.tv. I am Paul Leone with John Pinkerton and our uh, good friend, my neighbor, John Pajoli, who is the wine guy. And I gave him a wine glass for this tasting just so he'd feel at home. And Thank you very much. Uh, we brought him into this one because go ahead and uh, talk about the uh, the beer that uh, we're talking. We're going to do. Today. Well, uh, this is the Brooklyn Black Ops. Now, uh, I think the last time you were involved in the tasting, uh, mm -hmm. we we had a we had the Brooklyn Two. Brooklyn Local Two, yep, that's the exactly two, right. Right. Uh, now this is a. It almost put your eye. Okay, out. I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> brace myself this time down. for the. All right. Anyways, uh, this is another from the uh, the brewery in Brooklyn where they are doing the, the very traditional bottle condition Ooh, beers. Look at, look at um, Ooh, wow. Come off of that. It's it's beautiful. beautiful. Oh, that from the is monsters. awesome. Oh yeah. Uh, wow. This happens to be uh, a stout, oh. um, is that aged a in bourbon barrels. Um, it's 10.7% wow. alcohol, so I'm guessing it must be seven. an imperial stout. Um, Holy cow. It and honestly, I'm not really sure I know uh, much else about it. Um, I know that, that Garrett's done something with coffee in the recent... Yeah, that's wow, the bourbon I smell. Holy moly. Mm -hmm. It's another one of those that's 100% bottle wow. re-fermented. Yeah, the bottle conditioning has really become kind of the the, the specialty of the Brooklyn Brewing Company. Uh, mm -hmm. All these all these beers that you see in these uh, nice uh, oh, embossed yeah embossed like special Brooklyn glass. bottles. Yeah. yeah, these aren't just uh, they, bottles that he's filling up. They made a complete commitment to doing bottle conditioning when they bought their bottle line uh, for that brewery. It can only do still fill. In other words, beer can only be uncarbonated going into the bottle. It just won't work any other way. And that was his commitment to mm -hmm. going whole hog with the. Uh, the I, and I love it because you know, you know, you should never be afraid of it. Like, oh gosh, you know, it's not carbonated when you see that. Oh no, it is. It's mm -hmm. it, it is, but in a very drinkable, smooth way. Ooh. There's a lot going on in this, and I, I, I took a taste, and you took a taste, mm -hmm. and I wanted to get your thoughts, because I taste several things going on in this beer. I, what I smelled was bourbon right off the top. I smelled that. Mm -hmm. Subtle. It was subtle, but I smelled it. Um, I don't know if it's subtle, but... Um, well, it was there. It yeah, was it's definitely there. there. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not what I really tasted when I drank it. It wasn't like I was drinking... You know, straight bourbon. I tasted a little <laughs> chocolatey. Uh, I taste a little chocolate, a little coffee. Chocolate, mm -hmm. coffee hits me hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's definitely. I mean, the the bourbon because it. I mean, basically, mm. the big dominant flavor in bourbon is that vanilla oak character. Vanilla. Now that you mention it, a little bit. And so it lends itself very well with a lot of the kind of chocolatey flavors of the dark beer. Um, yeah, to me, it, I'm, I'm getting the real rich kind of caramelly yeah. characters. Um, my assumption is that there's, you know, chocolate malt or some black malt or something to give, give this, you know, deep color, but certainly a lot of um, uh, malts that are lending some sweetness there, yeah. whether it be caramel malts uh, or, or just a ton of, like, that base malt. Yeah. I mean, as you get higher in alcohols, as we've talked about in the past, a lot of times you end up with some residual sweetness. But uh, quite a lovely beer. This yeah, wow. very nice stuff. I would expect nothing less, of course. Yeah, of course, from yeah, from Brooklyn. Brooklyn. No kidding. And uh, Pajoli. Yeah, this is not like anything I've ever drank as a kid growing up. Um, this is this is very unusual. It tastes like you like John was mentioning. It's good. It's yeah, good. you it's actually like it. Well, I mean, we're doing good a, so far. So far, yeah. You can say if you don't. It's cool. No, I mean. A few glasses of this with a great meal yeah. could take the place of a bottle of wine. And, and you know, everybody knows Garrett Oliver is, is big on you know the you know the brewmaster's table and all of that. He's very uh, good at matching beers and food. And yeah, you can be certain that uh, anytime Garrett and his crew sit down and design a new beer, they are thinking about how it's going to go with the food. I'd love to hear what he designed for this. Well, you know what? I'm sure I'll I'll, I'll definitely check out. I, I, I'm sure on the website it'll say goes perfect with this, this, or this, or whatever's right here at the bottom of the screen that I just put up there. So, <laughs> and I, I do that because I didn't do my research that I should because I didn't know we were actually going to do this tonight because you brought it to us. Uh, but I, I will say this. I am not a stout fan. I never have been. And this, because they always seem so heavy to me. 
And this doesn't seem heavy to me. This is no. just as light and aromatic, and it, it really is very drinkable. And especially because it's 90 degrees today in Savannah, and it's very warm in here. Mm -hmm. I especially thought that I wouldn't, I would have a hard time tonight drinking a stout, and not at all. It's very smooth. Well, I'm surprised to hear you say that you didn't like them because they were heavy, but you like this because I mean this is. It does a lot of. It does have a lot, but it, in, but it's know? not syrupy to me. I guess some stouts to me seem syrupy. I don't know. I if think that's, when you uh, when you have something that has that much sweetness, mm -hmm. and especially a beer like this, uh, stout, mm -hmm. I think what's going to help kind of bring it back is going to be some acidity, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean in this case, I think you've got some nice kind of like. Boozy no, it's not uh, a little, I mean, little bit. Not, yeah. not to say like it's higher alcohol notes are dominant, but uh, you know, I think that kinda helps lift it back up, even though it has a nice kind of sweet kind of foundation. A nice snifter beer. Yeah. Hmm. You think? Very nice. I, I wasn't sure because uh, I, I started to mention that there's a coffee stout that yeah. Gary's done recently, and it seems like there's another there's a chocolate. Oh no! Yeah, he, he, the, the part of the regular line is the double chocolate stout. Yep. Line. Yep. So I really wasn't sure where this was gonna kind of fit in. Uh, so, but lovely stuff. Yeah, really good. Once again, Garrett, Thank very you. nice. Thanks again. And, uh, and and Garrett has been very nice to us. When John was out at the CBC, and unfortunately I didn't get to go, uh, Garrett gave you guys a rather nice. I wouldn't call it a rant. But I would call a very candid conversation with you guys, uh, with the camera rolling. So if you haven't oh, yeah. seen that, check it out on the website, because Garrett really tells it how it is, you know, and, and, uh, and you know, without feeling like he's bashing people, but he's very honest. Oh, yeah, and, it, but it's all this great material. I mean, great material. And this is one of those things that you should make sure you've got a good bit of time. It's, what did you say? It's, it's like, like 37, 37 minutes, minutes long, but it's worth it. He says stuff. And it's all continuous. I mean, it's it just, Gary is just like riffing, you know, it's, yeah. it's like, jazz player, you know, just talking about beer and just kind of going from one thing to the next and... Imagine you running into Garrett Oliver in a hallway and saying, hey Garrett, what are your thoughts about this? And just having him talk for 37 minutes. That's kind of what the video is like. I mean, you guys barely asked one or two questions and he just... And on the other end of the stick, uh, it's uh, pretty lo-fi. <laughs> but uh, like I said, you run into him in a hallway and he talks. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Our newfound friends outside want a taste of this. Oh, okay. We'll see. We're at the uh, we'll see about that. we're at the Moon River Brewing Company, Moon and uh, there's glass right over here to our, our right, and there's a lot of people eating, and that's where the bar is, and, and they want. And it's some. a bit like a fishbowl in here, and you're hearing beer being brewed and everything uh -huh. else in here. So, uh, really good. Thank you for bringing this to the well, table. Uh, we need to thank Ken Orth. Uh, Ken Orth. Ken thank Orth you, Ken. is uh, one of our our, our local mm -hmm. foodie beer. He and his wife. Uh, we actually got to see it savor. They came up for the trip and. Uh, He's always bringing me really great stuff. So this is really nice. Thank you, Ken, as well. Cheers, cheers to you. Cheers. You can find us on uh, Facebook, Twitter. And look at, hey, Twitter, we're, well, the time of this taping, we're at like 750 followers. I gotta get over 1,000. I mean, some guy who like uh, makes websites gets 4,000 followers, or worth at least over 1,000. Tell your friends. Yeah, you know, come on, tell your friends. Follow us on Twitter. It's a quest, 1,000. Cheers, sorry. All right. Cheers again. Cheers.